Good afternoon. I'm Barbara Tinnerman Cecil, and on behalf of Susie Spettler and Tom Beck, I want to welcome you to the 31st Oral History Taping. It is Thursday, April 16th, and this is the first of our spring series, and we are going to highlight our local businesses in West Melton. Our first speaker is Jim Sarver. Jim. Thank you, Barb. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Susie and Barb and Tom for spending the, the time of getting this together and try to get some history on record. It's kind of good to have that done and so people after us will know that. Um, I'll kind of start at the beginning of the Hale and Hale Sarver Funeral Home. It started back in, in 18, 1896 um, when my great-grandfather Roy Hale, his half-brother Harry Hale, opened up a funeral home and furniture store in West Melton. Back in the early 1800s and early 1900s, uh, most funerals were held in, uh, visitations were held in a home. So uh, you either, you had the visitation at home and, and um, funeral was held actually in, in mostly in churches. So you really didn't have a physical funeral home like you know today. Most of them were, were uh, uh, held out of the, uh, the funeral business was held out of the furniture store where they uh, sold furniture and caskets and that's where you get the correlation between uh, uh, most funeral homes back then had furniture stores and, and uh, along with the f funeral home. Uh, so about 1896, the funeral home started in downtown West Melton. Since that time, it's been in several locations. Um, after uh, my great-grandfather came into business in 1936, uh, it was located in uh, where um, Hamler's Insurance is. North of Hamler's Insurance was a large what you'd call commercial uh, spots now with a Dewey Marshall's Chrysler dealership, Bud Hoover's Bar and Grill, Anderson's had a barber shop in that uh, area, and then uh, Great Grandpa Hale had a furniture store in the next building, which would be right next to where Hamler's Insurance is now. So if you put all those buildings back there now, Phil would remember that it would take up almost all of 571 clear over to the West Mountain Inn, leaving just two, two lanes of highway. Uh, at that point, um, uh, it was also at Sh Shades Furniture, if you remember where Shades Furniture, which was across the street from where the um, Brick House Cafe is in that area. Uh, Great Grandpa Hale and Elmer Geating uh, built the first two floors in Masonic Lodge, or they built the first floor in Masonic Lodge, built the second and third floors of that building. They were there for a number of years. Uh, then they moved to North Miami Street 275, which is across the street from the funeral home now. And, and then in 1957, uh, my father moved it over at uh, where it's, the location is now at 284 North Miami Street. Uh, funeral services changed a lot. Um, Barbara's dad worked for us for 36 years, and at that time we, we delivered oxygen. We uh, took people back and forth to nursing homes, and the other funeral in town, Roy Miller and us, we were the only life squad in West Melton until the mid-70s. So if you had an accident, car accident, uh, needed someone to take you to the hospital, you'd call a funeral home, which seemed kind of odd uh, now, but that was a normal process back then. We delivered oxygen, hospital beds, any equipment you needed, you went to a funeral home back then, because there was no other, no other alternative. Um, so Harry Hale uh, passed away. Uh, and another interesting fact that uh, Roy Miller, who had the other funeral home, and my great-grandpa Hale, both worked for Harry Hale. And Roy Miller had a funeral home where the West Mountain Inn is. He had a funeral home and furniture store there. Uh, where the West Mountain Inn is now. So after uh, a Pop, we call him Pop Hale, had the fun funeral home, um, moved it from downtown to 275 North Miami Street, and then in 1957, uh, my father built the funeral home across the street, and uh, she, he and my mother, Rachel Ann, operated the funeral home until my dad's death in, in 69. Uh, my father died in 69, and Pop Hale died in 1969. A little interesting fact about my great-grandpa Hale, he was the smartest one in his high school class. 
and he was also the dumbest one in his high school class. That's what he said. He was the only, only graduate of the class of 1894 at West Milton. And uh, so he always said he was the smartest and the dumbest one in that class. Uh, that's kind of the history of the funeral home and how things have changed where you had them in the home, now they're all in the funeral home. And um, we are, I'm a fourth generation funeral director and my son is fifth generation. He has a funeral home in Pleasant Hill in Covington and we still operate out of the 284 North Miami Street uh, facility. Um, so I will turn it over to, to Chris Long at this point. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Jim. Uh, certainly our business, uh, Long & Associates, uh, hasn't been around nearly as long as uh, Hale Sarver, uh, but we did begin our business uh, 31 years ago, April 1st, 1984, is when we actually opened our doors. Uh, my partner, uh, Ro Long Wagner, and I uh, started the business then and uh, still are uh, in highly involved in, in, a, in the operation. We, uh, as, a, as, a, as a business, we provide uh, management services uh, to trade associations and professional societies. And uh, that's always very difficult to explain to people. Uh, it's fairly easy to say I'm a funeral director and this is what I do, or I'm a tennis coach and this is what I do. Uh, but uh, what, what does an association management company provide? Well, we, we, uh, we produce trade shows, uh, we <clears throat> produce industry magazines, uh, educational programs, uh, certification programs, accreditation programs for various organizations. Uh, we also administer such things as the membership databases for various trade so associations, uh, actually on a global basis. So uh, uh, right here behind uh, where we're sitting here today at, uh, at 28 Lowry Drive is actually the international headquarters for several trade associations, one being the uh, International Door Association. Now the International Door Association uh, is comprised of about 2,000 members worldwide, and these are individuals who sell, install, and service garage doors. So uh, perhaps here locally uh, in this market, uh, Dayton Door Sales is, is a common uh, uh, company that people recognize. And, uh, the late Ken Monnan, uh, former president and owner of, of that company, was a president of the association at one time. Uh, we manage about a, oh, a dozen uh, trade groups and some auxiliary uh, organizations, uh, one being the International Door Association, another being the Institute of Door Dealer Education and Accreditation, another one being a scholarship foundation that uh, just this last year uh, for the garage door industry has provided uh, almost a million dollars in scholarships uh, on a global basis. Uh, locally, we manage the uh, Dayton chapter of AIA, the architectural group. Uh, we also uh, do work for the United States Navy Cruiser Sailors Association. That's a fairly new one. Uh, but basically, these are retired, uh, uh, if you will, uh, sailors, and they, they stay together uh, and network together. Uh, we recently uh, began work for what is known now as the National Professional Anglers Association. So these are fishermen and their primary goal is to get uh, youth involved in, uh, in fishing. Uh, and they do that on a national basis. Uh, we also are involved with the uh, United States Agricultural Information Network and that is primarily an administrative uh, task. Uh, the Noble Circle Project, if you're familiar with that, it deals with uh, women and cancer. Uh, we are involved uh, in providing management services there as well. We have uh, 11, 11 employees. Uh, we also uh, uh, subcontract out uh, a, much, uh, a lot of work to uh, uh, various support companies, printing companies, uh, things that we, we can't do ourselves. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, last week uh, we produced a trade uh, convention for the uh, International Door Association. We had about 3,000 People come in for that, a uh, number of exhibitors, uh, and our keynote speaker was uh, uh, the Reds' uh, Johnny Bench, uh, and uh, he did quite a, quite a nice job. Um, it's kind of interesting, I think uh, maybe I see Phil Brumball over there, but uh, I think it was in 1985 that uh, <clears throat> I actually uh, purchased the building that I'm in from Gene Cleather and, and Phil. Uh, I must say he's a tough negotiator, <laughs> at least he was back then. Um, but uh, I think before then, uh, certainly it was Cleather Insurance, and I think Tom's Pizza had a parlor over there for a while. So uh, that's pretty much a rundown on uh, Long & Associates, and uh, we are...
very be pleased to be a part of uh, the West Milton business community. I'll now turn the uh, mic over to Brian. Thank you. My name is Brian Budding, and I am the current owner of Barefoot Canoe, and it's not going to be hard to explain what we do. Uh, we provide uh, rental service. We'll give you the canoe. We'll get you on the water uh, for as cheap as $20 for one person to $40 for two people. Uh, trips vary from an hour to eight hours. We really don't care how long it takes, as long as you're done by 7 o'clock. Uh, the business started was started by Harold Barefoot in 1972. Uh, he lives out on Gingsburg Road, and he fabricated his own canoes out of fiberglass. He did that for several years, and, and he's quite a character. I believe he's going to write an autobiography that everybody's going to want to read. <laughs> but he put, put those... Uh, Fiberglass canoes were available for purchase under the manufacturer's name Barefoot, and I've had several people come look for parts or this or that, and many of them have the last one he built before they broke the molds. So all I can assume is that he had a lot of molds, <laughs> or he told a lot of stories. Uh, the, a lot of the equipment colors are green and white, and as Harold's still around, I'll see him from time to time. He'll come down and visit, and he whether it's true or not, or a good story. Uh, the green and white came from Northmont because he graduated from Northmont High School. Uh, he sold the business to his nephew in 1992, and Bill ran it from 92 until 2008 when I bought it. Uh, I was a maintenance electrician for General Motors, and I was never going to leave General Motors, but General Motors left me. So uh, that left me with uh, a buyout money and a place somewhere to look and Bill was looking to get out so it all kind of worked out I always liked the outdoors I was a customer of Harold's when we were renting from his shop out on Ginghamsburg Road I know that Harold was also a big part of the river uh, habitat he was part of a fisherman's club that put together a lot of uh, a lot of the areas where the for, for bass fishing and I know he had a lot of, he fished until about two years ago. He was still hauling his canoe, one that he made in 1972. He was hauling it out to the, to the river there and, and putting in. Uh, that's really about all I have, and I'm going to send it over to Phil. Thank you. I'm Phil Wilson. Uh, I own C&J Party Supplies in West Milton. It's on 26 Emmick Road. Um, I bought the business on June 1st, 1984. So, been there 31 years. Um, back then, competition was a lot different. Martindale's was the biggest competition. They kind of split the town up in half. Nowadays, you know, everybody sells a little bit of lottery tickets for beer or wine, etc. The C&J name came from my sons, Chad and Jason, which I purchased the business off of Skip Corella, and his kids were Carlos and Jody. So at the time, I didn't have any money to change name anyway, so we just kept it the same. <clears throat> I've had, been fortunate to have some good employees. My sister, Pat, she's been with me for almost 25 years, and Karen uh, Joan Shevedecker, she's been with me for about 20 years. And both the, the young men's been there, seven and eight, Jordy and Andrew Post. Let's see here. Here in the last couple years, did some remodeling on the store inside and out. So it's got a facelift and try to keep up with the, the times, make sure everything. And Linda Ruff, she helped me do some interior stuff. And Steve Jones, he did some of the maintenance work around and redid my office. Back when I first bought the business, we did a lot of delivering. So we delivered to the Eagles, the Legions, the VFWs, the golf courses, and any place else that needed some supplies. Uh, if it wasn't for my mom and dad helping me establish the business, you know, in 84, I was 28 years old and had two, a one and a two-year-old at home. So I also worked for my father at the time and ran my own pop business, soda pop. So it was a busy time. You know, when I bought the place and took over on June 1st, it was a nice sunny day and it, it, we were so busy, I didn't, we closed at one o'clock then. And I didn't get out of there until 3 o'clock. And then it dawned on me, this is every day of the year. You, you never close. You know, when do you take some time off? So eventually you get used to it and, and get organized and things went, you know, smoother. Um, we sell, we have a state liquor store. 
which we have all sorts of beers and a nice selection of wine. So lottery and instance. Um, you know, we'll see how many more years we can hang in there. But that's pretty much the history of C&J's. Thank you. And now over to Jenny. Okay. I'm Jenny Brinkle, and Ed and I were the second owners of the B&B &B Market. And B&B &B Food Market was built in at 1177 South Miami Street in West Milton in 1959. Um, and the owners were um, Bill Norris and um, Willard Bill Norris and Beanie Thompson. Um, Bill owned the store at uh, the corner of Miami Street and Hamil and um, Yeah, <laughs> Hamilton and Miami Street, and um, Bill came when Bill got out of the army, or when Beanie got out of the army, he came to work there as a meat cutter, and stayed there and till him and Bill built the new B and B at uh, in town, and Max Lair opened a meat market in their old place. And when, when they built the new store, people in town told them they would never make it because it was too far from town. Mm -hmm. And in 1974, Ed and Jenny bought the store, and we kept the name B&B &B because it was well known, and we figured it had a good reputation. Although we had to change it from B&B &B Food Market to B&B &B Foods because it was copyrighted. So, and Ed always figured he bought a chain store because when Bill and Beanie would lock up the store, they had had a great big log chain they would put around through the handles to make it more secure. The store was not open on Sunday when we first bought it, and it stayed that way for some years later. The biggest change that we made when we bought the store was to change the meat department from self-service meat to service meat counter, which it is still today. And Ed was more familiar with that and got to uh, thought he would be able to get a better acquainted with the customers. And we also changed warehouses from Super Value to IGA. Ed always stressed um, service, and we were pretty proud of our carryout service, and we had some good carryout boys to take care of that because Ed never wanted anybody to carry out their own groceries if they didn't want to. And our, we owe an awful lot to our um, employees that we had because whatever they need, we needed them, they were there to, to help out. Our meat manager never knew that he was such a good carryout boy. And Diane, our produce girl, had worked work for Bill and Beanie and is still at the store today. Ed loved big sales. And first crazy day sale that we had, it was supposed to start at 4 o'clock, and we happened to look out, and traffic was lined up both ways on Route 48, and they had to call in two police cruisers and have the police to direct traffic. In 1978, during the blizzard, Ed walked from the north end of town in to open up the store. And couldn't get back home, so he slept on the checkout counter that night. And during, during that time, some of our good neighbors well, that had big trucks and four-wheelers were able to pick up bread and milk for us. And interesting that ice cream was one of the first things that we ran out of after um, bread and milk. So we were overwhelmed by the generosity of this town at Christmas time. With the do anonymous donations that we got, we were able to deliver quite a few um, food baskets to those in need. During our ownership, we added two additions. The back addition is the current meat department and storage room, and the front addition was put on in 1987, and it completely changed the look of the store. Before that, it faced Route 48 and now faces north. Um, Jim Yates put on the second addition for us. And we retired in 1990 and leased it at that time to um, IGA. And in 2000, Dave and Sandy Chastine took over the operation and are still operating a clean, friendly, 
well-stocked store with a beautiful meat and deli department. And they also still care, have carry out and home delivery and is now known as the West Milton IGA. And I'll turn over to John. Thanks. Um, my name is Steve Broomball. Or and, Steve. <laughs> uh, I work, uh, uh, I'm actually part owner of Broomball Engineering and Survey. And it is a consulting engineering firm specializing in civil engineering and surveying. And uh, we're located here in uh, West Milton, Ohio right now, off of 48 and Emmerich, right on the corner. And uh, we uh, were founded uh, by my father, who's sitting next to me. You'll hear from him in a second. But we were founded in 1972. And at that time, I believe it was called Pyramid Engineering. And uh, he operated under that name uh, for quite some time. And then in 2001, uh, my brother, who had already been working for my father for a while, they decided to uh, change the name to Broomball Engineering and Surveying. So we call it BES. And, uh, what we provide is professional engineering and surveying services to a wide variety of governmental and commercial, uh, industrial, private, and institutional clients. <laughs> well, we are uh, proud of our past history, on-time completion of projects, and specializes in projects with particular challenging design and schedule parameters. Um, we have done quite a bit of uh, work here in town on different buildings, and uh, we are proud of uh, quite a few I won't put in too much detail. I'll leave that up to my father, so I'm going to turn it over to my uh, father now. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, uh, Steve uh, emphasized uh, things pretty well. Uh, the, the biggest change that uh, when we started the uh, company in uh, 1972, um, the first contract we had was a uh, 50-year master plan for the federal government for Miami Valley Planning Commission, commission for five counties, uh, five counties around here. And so that's how we got started. And uh, from there, we did a lot of surveying and engineering. Some of the things we did recently around here was did the West Milton School, all the site work and sewer and water and streets and everything that came into the school. Um, <clears throat> We did uh, Northmont High School and Northmont Elementary School uh, last few years. And uh, we do a lot of surveying around the state for large construction sites, you know, like highways, bridges, uh, buildings. Um, we have done, just last year, we did the site work for um, Ohio State Stadium where they put on the bleachers. And uh, we also have done maybe five or eight other jobs, different things at Iowa State, like the tennis court, the baseball stadium, uh, some large duck work, the underground tunneling. So we, we do, uh, Steve said we do a, a lot of different categories, but basically we try to do things that are interesting and uh, that we can get. So whatever we can get, we try to do. <laughs> so that's our, and uh, <clears throat> when I started in the surveying business, uh, I was on a field crew that had a hand crank calculator. That was the best technology out there at that time. And now we have, you know, we're doing computers, we're, we can take uh, points and and email them to our site uh, through the data collector and it goes immediately into the the gun and they can shoot those uh, points within a few minutes of when we send it from the office it's it's uh, we're very uh, highly uh, electronified computer sized and, and all that so it's been a uh, huge learning curve for the last well, 72 to now would be about 43 years. And, uh, and for a long time, the engineering and surveying business just sort of stayed static, didn't change. But all of a sudden, new, new equipment, new technology, and things, and every year it just changes. We're constantly changing something, you know. And uh, so we're, we're glad to be here. We have uh, somewhere between 25 and 30 people. and. Uh, we're going to have to build on uh, 
sometime. Right now we're cramming everybody in. And uh, so that's, we're very happy to be in West Melton and um, very happy for this opportunity to talk about our company. I'll turn it over to my next guest there. I'm, <clears throat> my name is Terry Hassel. I built West Milton Optical uh, approximately 25 years ago. I'm a licensed dispensing optician in the state of Ohio. And in the Army, I was a medical specialist, and so I did get some opportunity to work with eyeglasses and those type of things in the Army. And I came out, worked for other optical shops for a while, and finally got my own licensing, and um, so I built West Milton Optical. I've had it for about 25 years, and I'd say approximately 10, 15 years ago, and about 15 years ago now, I sold half my company to John Stuckey, so that I could take some time off and uh, as we go in toward retirement, we could share taking time off working and that type of thing. I currently only work probably three days a week. I used to work six or seven days a week when I was first opening it up. We're famous for our low prices on eyeglasses and the way we would do that is we have a wholesale division where we travel around the country and we have other optical shops all around the country and around Dayton and Ohio and such that buy eyeglass frames from us. What we do is we buy in thousands of these frames from other, other companies in the U.S. and then we turn around and we resell those frames to optometrists at a really good deal. And so we're famous for every frame in our shop is $10. We've had a, a one penny increase in the 25 years that we've been in business. Our frames used to be $9.99 since John came on. In order to afford him, we had to uh, raise it to $10 a frame. So with that penny increase, that's about the biggest price increase we've had since um, we opened up our shop. I owe a great deal of thanks to being in West Milton from uh, the Kleinfelter family. Uh, years ago, uh, there was a man named Ralph Kleinfelter who owns the city building or had the city building, the old city building here in town, which I think was the fire department and the jail and all, all the functions there in that building. And uh, he wanted to have a reasonable priced optical shop in the town. And so he had talked to me about if I keep my prices reasonable, that we'd get a good deal on the rent. The Kleinfelter family has honored that all these years, and we have a booming, successful business where we're over 35,000 customers. We draw from over a 100-mile radius on a daily basis that people come that far to come get a good deal on eyeglasses. We're, we're doing two pair of glasses for $60. That's any frames in the shop, and that's pretty up to pretty high powers in the, that. And the way we're able to do the lenses and save people a bunch of money on that is we actually own a laboratory for making the lenses. And so when somebody comes in with their prescription, we don't do any eye testing or any of that type of thing. So they come in with their prescription, and then we make the glasses to their prescription, and then we give them a one-year warranty on their $10 frames if anything was to happen. And um, business has just been booming since then. And, I'll turn it over to my partner here, John, and he can tell you a little more about us. <clears throat> the, uh, we have a, an interesting, started out as a retirement business when I came on for both Terry and I, and uh, I retired, I was a software developer for, for years. Um, what we did is we set out four business principles that we wanted to uh, maintain. The first thing is we wanted to provide good quality eye care at a reasonable price for people. That was important from Mr. Kleinfelter's point of view and why our, our, the original uh, tack on this thing. The other thing is to provide a reasonable income for our families. The third item uh, is to have fun. And the fourth item is to grow our friendship. And if uh, we've found over the years, uh, it's been a remarkable partnership uh, we've never had uh, an argument or a serious disagreement. We see eye to eye on, uh, that's much different than uh, either one of our marriages. <laughs> <coughs> uh, but we have, uh, it, it's been, it's been a, a blessing for, for both of us to be able to, to work in an environment and uh, spend a couple, three days a week at a shop 
and knowing that uh, your business partners got your back. And so we appreciate the, along with that, we appreciate being in the West Milton community. It's, uh, uh, we've got, met a lot of nice people and I hope in the future we'll have some, some of the people on here, uh, some of the people that we really um, wanted to uh, acknowledge was uh, Bill and Kathy McGrath with Mark and Steve, the Bulldog Diner, the Brick House, uh, and some of the other shops in town. We draw from a 100 mile radius. <clears throat> so when people come into our shop for repairs or anything, instead of just hanging out in the shop, we send them to other businesses in the area and say, well, why don't you go get you know, lunch at uh, Bulldog Diner or the Brick House or something like that. So uh, we've, we like being uh, a destination business uh, and an anchor business for, for the community. <clears throat> um, one of the other things is we brought a, a flag. One of the young men that uh, uh, worked in our shop uh, recently went to Afghanistan and um, <clears throat> in the Army and uh, get this, show this here. <clears throat> One of our proud accomplishments this young man's done for us, he went off to war, served his country. It was interesting that uh, we maintained his job, gave him a couple pay raises while he was gone, and I think we have hooked this young man to stay working, making eyeglasses at West Milton Optical so that as we retire, eventually he can move into that slot of taking care of business for us, and the, the theme goes on. But this, this the shadow box <clears throat> is recognition from the uh, uh, commander in Afghanistan at Kandahar Air Force Base, uh, or the air base there, uh, and the flag flew over that air base uh, in honor of West Milton Optical and the West Milton community. And uh, we were happy to uh, support uh, the, the service uh, that, that he did. Terry's a veteran of the Army, I'm a Navy veteran. Uh, and we, uh, uh, we're looking forward to uh, Rusty Chrisman being a, uh, a long time uh, employee and someone who hopefully will take over the business and will keep this business in West Milton for, for many years. That's all I have. You might tell about the kids and cookies. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, um, Rusty got this thing started with the kids. He was playing, the, the bus stop comes right, right, to, uh, right out in front of our shop there in West Milton. And um, when the kids get off the school bus, you know, their families and their siblings are there waiting. And Rusty is there playing peekaboo with one of the little siblings that are waiting for their brother to get off the bus. Well then, uh, while he's playing peekaboo and that, well the next thing you know, uh, He's inviting the, the kids to come in and uh, get cookies from him and that type of thing. And so it became a, an ongoing thing before he went to war that uh, the kids would come, get off the school bus and come running in and Rusty would have cookies for them. And Rusty was, and, and I and John, were encouraging our customer base to, instead of trying to tip us or something like this, if you're happy with the services that we provide, to bring cookies. So the customers bring in the cookies. We, sh we eat a lot of the cookies and we share, <laughs> we share a lot of the cookies with the kids as they get off the bus. But what was interesting about this thing with Rusty and this technology is I personally don't use computers very often and I don't even have a cell phone. But uh, Rusty has a cell phone and is good on the computers and John's good on the computers. So these kids were able to get off the school bus, come in to the West Milton Optical, and they could get on the computer and Skype with Rusty while he was at war. I think that was a big thing to keep some peace of mind. Uh, and, and, and I think it was a good thing for Rusty and I think it was a good thing for us to be able to, to see Rusty on a regular basis. And so uh, when he came back from war and uh, Boy, we're all so happy. But now that the kid theme with the cookies still carries on, and uh, we probably get uh, four or five batches a week at least, uh, different cookies and those type of things that are brought into to our office. And then we do still share with not only our other guests that come in and buy glasses, but with the kids that get off the school bus. So that's kind of a neat, neat thing. Give your address. Our, a city oh, our address is 104 South Miami Street. That's actually State Route 48. It's the old uh, city municipal building, and uh, we have a, in the jail area, 
we uh, have a, a tenting area for glasses. So if your glasses get tented at West Milton Optical, they got tented in the jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we just love the Kleinfelter family. Yeah. What else do you have to add? Well, well, I, I think all of us kind of the theme a lot of us have here is that the loyalty of, that people in West Melton have for all of our businesses. I think that, and you've seen a lot of the businesses grow and and just people still to try to do business with people in town. I am going to take exception to, to Chris here because. He said that Phil was a very hard negotiator. Go ahead, good negotiator. Yeah, yeah, well, if it wouldn't be for the Broomball family, our funeral would not have been able to expand our parking lot without Phil selling us some property about <laughs> 25 years ago. Because we'd been in bad, bad shape without Phil. So, so uh, I don't want I don't want to say that he was a bad negotiator, but he could have done better. But I wasn't going to pay anything more. <laughs> but no, they did save us uh, uh, a lot with uh, for parking. But the, the loyalty of people in Milton are. Everybody here recognizes that for everyone. You want to the Hale House? Well, the Hale House, yeah, we've expanded that. We're, we have some other things in the in the making to approve the funeral home. Uh, uh, we developed a, what we call the Hale House, which is kind of like our Ronald McDonald House. Uh, people from outside of town can stay there. It's a we used to call it a uh, bed and breakfast, but it's now called a guest house. The breakfast is very limited now, so it's a <laughs> guest house, and we're thinking about expanding that. And we have some other ideas, the use of that building, and we're developing a. Um, uh, concept for a museum, a future museum that that will house some of this information as well as my mother's history. Um, we have two options right now. We're looking at starting a, a Union Township Museum again to try to take Arlene's place when that one closed. But the Hale, Hale House is available for people to come out of town to stay as guests for funerals. And uh, we haven't opened up for public, probably will not, but every once in a while we do have some, we have some people staying for over alumni weekend in it. But that's right next to the funeral home. And then eventually, um, we were thinking about maybe a banquet, a little banquet center and, and historical area. So that's kind of, we're always thinking about changing things, and my son has a lot of ideas to change, and that's good. So. I might add just a note regarding West Milton. I, we, we've been here now, like I say, for, for 31 years. Uh, it's a great place to recruit employees, uh, very loyal, faithful, uh, trustworthy uh, individuals in, this, in our community. Uh, the other thing is, is that, you know, if people are out there watching us, uh, hopefully they would, uh, and, and perhaps if they're thinking about relocating a business or establishing a business, I would encourage them to contact the uh, village manager, Matt Klein. Uh, we have a very proactive business uh, community here and certainly want to invite them to uh, take a look at us. It sits there and it waits for me until summertime. <laughs> <laughs> Often I've been asked what I do all winter, and the great thing is I get to do whatever I want. That's good. So absolutely. It's almost semi-retirement, I guess. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I've used his business before, he took ownership uh, on many occasions, and one of the things he forgot to mention about his uh, business is that you get a canoe, you put it in the river, you float down the river, and then they, his guys will take the canoe and they haul it back and, and haul you back. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about getting like your transportation back to your car. Yeah, you so that's, that's very convenient. It's a fun, fun, fun time to canoe down the Stillwater River. There aren't many cities that still have that kind of thing. So it's really a nice service. Yeah, I know when it started, I think Harold was one of the first first around. Um, I'm not exactly sure when he opened his business in officially in the, in the uh, park there, but I know I used him as a, as a customer before I could drive, so that's been a lot of years ago. If you ever think about expanding your business, I live on the Stillwater in downtown Dayton, <laughs> and so it would be nice to be able to get the in side. the evening just to go home, paddle home. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pick it up in the evening. Oh, you can drive it back the next day, but drop off all the parking down there. The, uh, the conservancy guys have an issue with you going through the dam. So, I mean, it's going to be a little work for you to go up and over. Well, I was they don't want you to canoe through it. No, okay. Yes, yeah, so there's a big problem. There. <laughs> but it is interesting how many people, we, you know, I, I went to school with Steve, and where I've had an ops, uh, uh, any occasion to use broomball services, I have had occasion to use Mr. Wilson's services. <laughs> uh, we all have. <laughs> I can remember as a kid, maybe, gosh, it must have been elementary school, we went to Sarver Funeral Home for a, uh, a, a field trip. 
and one of the ex and one of the exercises was uh, to pick out the casket that you want to be buried in. Yeah. And the next thing, and you you looked at it, and everybody, you know, somewhere at the high end, and somewhere in there, I was next to this straw-filled pine box. And then they said, "Now move to the casket you will want to bury your mom, dad, loved one in." And most moved to a to a higher priced, more elegant uh, model. And and there I was next to the. Pine box. We never told your parents. That. I never. Uh, <laughs> they're not going to know. <laughs> <laughs> I think something else, Jenny. Uh, for those who, who knew Ed, it's got to be a a, a a privilege to see the, the the company that you sold your business to maintain most of the standards that you and Ed had. Mm -hmm. uh, Ed was not probably the easiest person to work for. Very particular. One of the things done correctly, correct? But fun. But fun. But fun. <laughs> you always wanted to make sure you had your shoes shined and gave Ed Brinkle a firm handshake, especially if you're dating you one of his daughters. My daughters. If you're yeah. dating one of their daughters. Not that I did not do that, but I was yeah. told that. But uh, uh, and I see the the, the, the gleam in, in Steve and Phil's eyes that when your son takes over and your kids take over your business and it's still successful, right. it's uh, it's got to be a, a rewarding thing to see. But but B and B still is run similar to how Ed. And, and, uh, and the floor always had a shine. Correct. And it still does. It yeah. did. It was yeah. always clean. Always yeah. clean. Mm -hmm. and, and I had two sons that worked there, and, and that really helped them out to learn to uh, to have a job, to know that they needed to be there on time. It was a good thing. Both of our sons worked. We, we felt responsible for a lot of, of them that went on to hire jobs because right. we had them first. Right. <laughs> That's right. And you talked about good work ethics. Yep. Yes. Yes. I, I was just going to say that uh, their deli is one of the best best around. I yes. always enjoy going there. Yeah. And it's it's an excellent, excellent deli. Beautiful meat department. It is a beautiful meat department. And does Wally work? Yeah, Wally still works there. I thought so. Yeah. So you have three sons. That have work three sons places. working there. And uh, what I didn't say when I was going to say was the fact that they, the sons represent the fourth generation of Broombaws that have had businesses of different, you know, this, ours is an engineering business. But my grandfather had a business here, my dad had a business here, and uh, I have a business here, and now, now my sons are there. So four generations of yeah, broom Grandpa boss. Levi. Huh? Grandpa Levi, I'll yeah. say. At Phil what Levi. age do you turn, all, turn over your finances to them? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> That's why you, have, you always want to see your, the, the business grow, so you, they're the ones paying you. At the end, Phil, so. Phil, why don't you give a little more history about your dad and some of his... His famous, he's got a very famous father. Yeah, he, uh, and his he, first, and one of his first businesses north of the town was an interesting <laughs> business. What's that? One of his first businesses that he had that, that I knew of, flocking cars. Yeah. That was a great, that was great. Yeah. Tell him about your dad. Yeah. Uh, he'd try anything once. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but he, uh, he was, uh, he grew up in West Milton. He uh, played, he grew up in West Milton, played football here for high school. A lot of stories that he he had because uh, uh, he was very good. Went on and played for the Bears. He was uh, also played for University of Florida and was in the Hall of Fame down there. And uh, then went on and played for the Bears. And he his backfield was Bronco Nagurski, Red Grange, himself, and uh, he was the first T formation quarterback in the National Football League. And uh, he, he had a you know a great career. And when he got done playing football, he was the only T-formation quarterback coach in the nation. So he set up uh, T-formation in a lot of the schools that were leaving single wing, and uh, like Notre Dame, um, Chicago Cardinals, and are now the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, uh, University of Cincinnati, I, you know, just a whole bunch. I can't remember. But when I was a kid, I got to go with them on a lot of these things, and I could sit there on the sidelines or on the goal posts and watch all the, everything that he was doing. So it was George pretty Alice was his coach, wasn't he, for the yeah. Bears? Yeah, yeah, George Alice. Yeah. One of my favorite stories that Dad always tells is because uh, Grandpa was a, was a good running back at the University of Florida. And uh, I think they won, I don't know, what, what was the bowl they won? Uh, well, that was Boston College, but uh, University of Florida, they were in. You know how United States, uh, Ohio State went undefeated into the national championship game 
uh, just a few years, you know, 10 years ago or something. University of Florida did the same thing against uh, Tennessee. Same thing, both undefeated, national championship, and he happened to lose that one. Um, but, uh, you know. Anyways, he was a good running back, and then he went to the Bears, and uh, he looked at who was around him, and uh, George Hallis asked him what he, what he did. And he looked around, I saw Red Grange and Bronco Nagurski said, I'm quarterback. Anybody <laughs> 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 else? Thank you. Thank you all very, very much. It's been very interesting. We've all learned a lot, and we thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.